My name is David Hay. I am a cluster engineer with Linbit, a clustering and disaster recovery company. In this episode, we'll be talking about DR, or disaster recovery. So, what is disaster recovery? Disaster recovery is a subset of business continuity. Business continuity being a collection of policies, technologies, and practices uh, that a business can use to survive a failure of an entire site. Uh, so it's part of a geo-redundancy plan. Disaster recovery itself focuses on the technical aspect of business continuity. And that's what we'll be talking about here, is the technology. When we talk about disaster recovery, uh, we have a few tenets that we need to hold to in order to make sure that this plan is effective. Uh, for one, we have RTO, a recovery time objective. This RTO is used to define uh, the recovery time for a particular site. How much time should it take for technology to be back online and ready to provide service or providing service? Uh, and we also have RPO, recovery point objective. How much data can we lose in a site when it fails? So when we're talking about DR, we're trying to mitigate uh, things like uh, natural disasters, significant human error, the kind of things that affect large areas. This might uh, affect an entire power grid, for example. So whenever we are using disaster recovery, we talk about things in very distant sites, in what we can call geodiverse sites. So an area on the East Coast that is affected by something that is the East Coast of the US uh, might have a replica on the West Coast that is more guaranteed to be unaffected by whatever disaster happened in that other area. So for DR, we talk about first offsite backups. The thing that we need to recover most in technology is usually the data. Environments can be rebuilt, applications can be reinstalled, but the data cannot be replaced. So we need to back it up. An offsite backup is a sound strategy. It's a good part of a DR strategy. You should still have it as part of any DR strategy, but it has some drawbacks when it's relied on solely. That being that backups are difficult to restore from quickly, especially if they're on tape, which is very common, or if they're up in a surface even such as S3 or Glacier, it can take a long time to recover, especially if there's a lot of data. Uh, second, uh, as a technology, uh, backups can sometimes take a long time to kick off. They do have to happen on a schedule. Uh, there are a lot of uh, things to consider uh, when talking about backups. Because we have to recover them, we have to make sure they're consistent. We have to make sure we have plans for recovering that data. We have to make sure that we can actually do it, so it requires practice. Uh, in addition to that strategy, to off-site backups, we can also use off-site replication. And this is a way of establishing a second site, usually in another very different area, uh, that data is actively replicated to and is in an environment that's ready to provide service so that you can cut over services to this already established system and use the same data that you were using on the site which failed. This is a much faster strategy than just off-site backups. And it can even be integrated in geo-clustering systems to make this failover very rapid and automatic. We're not talking about that here, we're talking about the data. So, because we're talking about the data and we want to reduce recovery time, best way to do that is to stream those changes. Most DR systems that are part of a storage technology use scheduled file system replication. Now this has a few advantages and drawbacks. A scheduled file system replication usually is kicked off by a job that stats the file system for any changes that have happened since the last time that replication occurred, and then transfers those changes over. This is usually done with something like rsync, or at least a protocol based on rsync. And this has a few drawbacks because it takes a while to stat the changes. We have to run it on a schedule. So if we're running it every 15 minutes, what we're really saying in a way is every 15 minutes, we're leaving a 15 minute window in which data was not streamed or data was not backed up. So when we're trying to reduce the amount of data loss, that is our recovery point objective, that would be a way of defying, of defining, yes, we can lose 15 minutes of data, but that's not often uh, acceptable. 
to lose 15 minutes of data. If it is, that's helpful. But in a lot of cases, uh, critical databases and things like that need to be kept as up to date as possible rather than simply defining uh, what we may accept in a worst case scenario and then accepting that that worst case scenario is very likely to happen. So with streaming replication, what we can do is actually not pause for that scheduled time. We don't have to stat and figure out where we are and what we need to transfer. We can continuously stream those changes as they occur. This is done, in this case, using DRBD. DRBD is a block replication technology. You can use just about any file system or workload on top of it that you would like. Uh, so because it's a block streaming technology, we can actually just transfer the changes that are made as they're made, rather than relying on a schedule. So DRBD proxy extends DRBD's ability to replicate asynchronously with a few extra features. Uh, the most important of those features for DR purposes is asynchronous replication. That is, rather than synchronous, which is to say we write a copy of data on one node, it is copied to another node, and then once the data is on both nodes, it's considered written. That's, that's too tight for a WAN. WANs typically have, and what is wide area networks, typically have a longer latencies between uh, a write occurring and us being able to acknowledge that write. So if a round trip time between two very distant sites is say, for example, a second, then an application that is synchronizing data between those sites synchronously rather than asynchronously can only write at uh, one transaction per second, which isn't, that's not good enough. It doesn't work for just about anything. So we use asynchronous replication to decouple the latency of a link from the latency of the application while still allowing that application to stream all of its changes and not having to rely on a schedule which is much more prone to data loss. So we have a continuous stream, which is a huge advantage over things like rsync-based protocols because we can always ensure that that stream is point in time consistent. When you're copying things with a file system replication tool, you might copy half of the changes of a file. And if that synchronization stream is cut off in the middle, that replica on the other side may not be consistent. It may not work. Using a replication stream rather than a schedule ensures that we can use concepts like file system barriers uh, and flushes and metadata journals to make sure that the replica on the other side, even though it may be behind by some time, is actually consistent and works. And this is important for bringing up applications because if an application comes up and has corrupt data that needs to be fixed, that directly impacts the recovery time from a disaster. So this reduces that risk as well. But because we have this large stream buffer that is in memory, far above and beyond what we get with TCP send buffers in Linux, we can have this buffer be many gigabytes in size. So you can pool many gigabytes and changes. Uh, many workloads have what we can call spikes. That is, uh, you may have very heavy throughput in one moment and then not much throughput in another. So if we can manage to pool those changes in a buffer that's large enough to smooth out those spikes, we can actually smooth them out into a straight line using that buffer. A buffer that's large enough to absorb the playtime of a workload. And we can drain those, those spikes uh, over the throughput of a WAN. That is, achieving maximum throughput over a WAN continuously, not having to stop. We don't have to stop in stat. We don't have to do anything. It's always streaming. So it's already much more efficient than using a file-based replication system. And because we're doing that, we can also compress that buffer. So if you have data that's very compressible, then DRBD proxy is capable of applying compression to that data. So you may be able to get even more throughput over your WAN than you'd normally be able to get. So we're even more efficient at this point. And because proxy is already using DRBD, uh, then your local replica and your offsite replica can also have replicas of their replicas. You can synchronize one cluster to another very easily. And because it's using DRBD and block-based replication, you can use just about any file system you'd like on top of it. So it's extremely compatible.
And because we can rely on things like file system buffers, those sorts of things for assuring consistency, those sites can be consistent. So in general, it's a very good solution for accomplishing DR that is not only very capable, but also very safe and effective and can ensure consistency of your data. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and watch our other videos. See you next time.